everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's reading vlog. So it's that time again, it's final book support group time. And here is my TBR stack. So we have Crimes and Covers, which is the fifth and final book in the Magical Bookshop Mystery Series for Pulpec. Uh, Mermadusa for final book. Witch Hat Italier for graphic novel, manga, or novella. Uh, the City Beyond the Sea for Continuation Station. The Problem Children Island in, I think it's the Sun, for um, TBR Vet. And then Laura Olympus Volume 4 for Special Edition. So this is my main TBR for the week. Hopefully I will be able to get through all of those. I'm actually about to do some sprints myself. Um, I did catch a little bit of Steph's sprints earlier today. So I can technically check that off, but I'm sure I will be participating in more. I'm also 66 pages into Secret of the Reaping, which is the second book in the Vanquishers series. So I'm also working on some other sequels. We're going to see how many series books I can get through in the next week. In addition to my TBR, I'm feeling pretty confident about my stack. I have lots of various books around my room that would apply. I have like a Twisted Tale anthology which is a bunch of short stories in the Twisted Tale series. I have the Ghost of Green Glass House, which is a reread, but is the second book in the Green Glass series. I have Murder at Blackburn Hall, which is I think the second book in that series. I have Traitor's Blade, which is the fifth book in the Blackthorn Key series. I have The Princess Who Flew with Dragons, which is the third and maybe final book in that series. And those are just the ones I'm thinking of off the top of my head that I can easily see. So we're going to see how many series books I can actually get through this week. I'm going to try to check in pretty regularly, so we'll see how that goes. But with that being said, I think I'm going to wrap this clip up here because I don't really have much to talk about. I just wanted to let you know what I was planning on reading this week. And I'm going to go run some sprints and I will hopefully check back in with you in a day or two to let you know how I'm doing. So it is Thursday and it is time to check in. I've had a massively successful week so far. On my bingo board, the only spots I haven't completed are self-care because I haven't done anything specifically for that yet and continuation station. So speaking of continuation station, let's start there. I'm reading The City Beyond the Sea for this and I'm on page 44. I don't have much to say yet because we've only just started. We do have a new POV in this one, which I'm curious about. It took me a second to place this new POV because it is somebody we know about from the first book. And it's been a bit since I've read the first book, but I do now know who they are and how they fit into the context of the world. And I'm even more curious now that I know who they are. This is my goal for today. I'm hoping I can finish this today. So if I do, then all I would need to do is find some time and some way to do some self-care, which should be pretty easy. I could watch some TV for a bit. Um, I could take a nap. I could work on a puzzle. Like I, I will find some way to do a little bit of self-care. So this is the last book I need to complete my TBR. It's not the only book I'm in the middle of though, because I'm also partway through as I lose my, uh, my little book light. Uh, the Princess Who Flew With Dragons. I'm 102 pages into this one. This is the third book in this series. And in this one, we're following Princess Sophia. And I didn't love book one. I liked it enough that since I owned book two, I was going to keep going. And then I really enjoyed the POV for book two, and I'm not enjoying this POV as much. Um, she is currently in a different kingdom and is trying to uh, 
play the part of a charming diplomatic princess, but um, decides she's going to take a break and uh, disguises herself and wanders the city. And it kind of allows her freedom she's never had before. And then some things are going to happen that make that a lot more dangerous. So, so far it's, it's fine, but it's feeling very three star. But I should be able to finish it rather quickly and then I would be caught up slash finished with the series. I don't know if this is the last one, but it is certainly the most recent, which would get this off of my current like series I'm in the middle of, which would make me happy whether there is a new book or not. Now on to the books I finished. First up, I finished my book for special edition by reading uh, Lore Olympus Volume 4. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling and I just think that the art style is absolutely gorgeous. I love the way the artist uses color and I've really really enjoyed the series. This one got four and a half stars. I really like the way the story went in this one and some of the things we discovered through reading this particular volume. I'm still loving the way that Hades and Persephone's relationship is developing. This is such an intriguing story Although it is another one I probably will not touch until I need it for this readathon because I really struggle with the special edition because most special editions for like series tend to be like romanticy a lot of times and I don't read a lot of that or like YA fantasy and I don't read a lot of that so I always struggle with this prompt and right now and I was literally just watching Becca from Becca in the Books and she was talking about how she is two volumes behind. So she just read volume five and volume seven is coming out later this year. So I still have like three volumes I can play with if this prompt continues to come up. So we will see how that goes. Um, because once that's up, I'm, I don't have a Scooby-Doo what I'm going to read um, just because special editions aren't really my thing. It doesn't have to be the special edition version, just I for some reason am not drawn to series that tend to get special editions. So we'll see where I go from there. But right now I'm loving this and don't be surprised if it pops up on the next Final Book Support Group TBR that needs a special edition prompt. Then I read Secret of the Reaping, which is the second book in the Vanquisher series, and I gave this four and a half stars. And seriously, how could they leave me there? Giant, giant, giant cliffhanger. Book three comes out later this year and it's become one of my most anticipated sequels because I want to know what's going to happen next. So in this series, we're following Boog and her friends. And in the first book, one of her friends goes missing and they live in a world where vampires used to exist and their parents are still really, really cautious. So when their friend disappears, their parents get even more overbearing and they are looking into their friend's disappearance because they don't necessarily believe it's vampires, but they want to know what happened to their friend. So. We're, we're definitely living in a world where vampires at least at one point existed and I enjoyed the first book. I absolutely enjoyed the second one. I can't really talk about what's happening in this one because spoilers for the first book, but I still really, really love Boog and her friendship and like their little friend group that they've got. I liked seeing how the story played out in this one because there were definitely some interesting things going on in this one. I'm sorry I'm being a little bit vague, but like it's really, really hard to talk about without spoilers. So it, it definitely had a lot of really interesting story beats. There was a lot of questions left unanswered. And there were definitely some twists in here I didn't see coming. And I'm very curious to see how that they kind of play out in book three. So this is definitely a series I hope I can stay caught up on um, by reading book three when it comes out later this year. Then I read Witch Hat Atelier volume two and I gave this 4.25 stars. This follows a young girl named Coco who has always wanted to learn magic and didn't think she ever could. But then in the first book, some things happened that caused her to end up being apprenticed to be a witch. In the first volume, it left in a cliffhanger and we kind of pick up where that one left off, like right where that one left off. And I'm betting this one's gonna do the same because this also left on a cliffhanger. So I'm also very, very curious as to where this one's going. And I was really annoyed because I finished this right after Secret of the Reaping and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Two books in a row with giant cliffhangers. So I've really, really enjoyed seeing Coco learn more about magic and how it works. She is training with some other young witches and they have some interesting personalities and I like seeing how they kind of balance each other out. 
this brought up a lot of questions about things that were going on in the greater world and I'm very curious to see how they play into the next volume and like I said there's a giant cliffhanger here that has me asking lots of questions so hopefully we'll get some answers in volume three which I have requested from my library and it is now officially on my August TBR. I should also mention this is the book I read for graphic novel manga comic novella etc prompt for the final book support group. Then I read Crimes and Covers. This was my poll pick and I gave this 3.75 stars. This is the fifth and from what I can tell final book in the Magical Bookshop mystery series. So I don't know where people are getting the fact that it's the final book but it does seem to jive. I just haven't found a direct quote from like the author but either way this has got me caught up on the series if not finished. This follows Violet who in the first book goes back home to visit her grandma Daisy. She hasn't been back to her hometown in a long time for reasons we discover during the first book. And Grandma Daisy ends up dropping a bombshell on her that she is the caretaker of a magical tree that resides in the bookstore her grandmother owns. And it is now Violet's duty to take up that caretaking job. Violet isn't happy about this. She does not plan on staying in town until somebody ends up dying and her grandmother becomes the number one suspect. So she stays to help out her gram, to clear her gram's name, and during that learns more about what being a caretaker means. I did not enjoy this one anywhere near as much as the others. In this one, a woman comes into the shop with a super rare book from Henry David Thoreau. And Violet says, well, I need to have this authenticated. And the woman storms off in a huff because she doesn't have time for that and then ends up dead. And written on her hand is they took the book. And this leads Violet to looking into things. One of the things I will say about this one that bugged me was there was definitely a time jump between book four and book five. And I kept checking to make sure that I had read book four because I felt like I had missed an entire book. Usually cozies, the background story doesn't quite matter as much, but there is usually a background story because obviously these characters are living their lives, developing relationships, friendships, etc. And this one just it felt like there was a giant time jump and it was really jarring because I felt like I had missed a book. So I did not enjoy that time jump and the way it kind of played out in this because it made it very, very jarring. It's another reason I think this might be the last book because it kind of felt like she wanted to wrap up all of the loose ends and kind of move on. And it feels like she's kind of done that. So I don't know. The mystery, I wasn't necessarily massively into either, but it was decent. It wasn't my favorite mystery, but it was decent. And I did not manage to figure out who did it, which definitely helped the rating, but it was jarring and I wanted more out of this book. I'm very sad if this is the final book because I really liked the premise of the series, but it, it was very, very jarring. So if you're reading the series, keep in mind that there is going to be a chime jump between books four and five and no, you did not miss anything. Then for final book, I read Marmadusa and I gave this five stars. This is the fifth and final book in the Eerie on Sea series and in this series we follow Herbert Lemon who runs the Lost and Found in the local hotel and one day Violet shows up looking for her lost parents and a friendship between the two kids develops and they end up doing a lot of uh, interesting things involving some legends of Eerie on Sea throughout the books this one wraps up their story and their journey and ties up all of the loose ends in a really nice way. I'm so sad. But like in the best possible way, I love this series so much and I'm so sad that we're done with this series, that we aren't going to be spending more time with these characters. It is 100% a series I will reread, but I really, really liked how this book managed to take all of the little loose threads from the first four and wrap them up in a nice little bow while still leaving a few things unknown, which I understand and I think they work perfectly for why they were left unknown. Once again, the friendship between Herbie and Violet was front and center and I absolutely adore their friendship and the bond these two characters have created over the five books. I will 100% reread this series in the future and just what a perfect ending and I can't wait to read more books by Thomas Taylor and see what interesting and unique characters he introduces to me to in those. Then I went off TBR but I did read a sequel and that is Murder at Blackburn Hall by Sarah Rosette and I gave this 3.75 stars. This follows Olive and we're in 1923 
And in the first book ends up looking into a mysterious murder. In this one, she's working as a hat model because she hasn't gotten any new mysteries to investigate until she gets sent to discreetly look into an author's disappearance. So she goes and travels to this town and soon there's a body. And then there's a second body and that body makes the police look straight at Olive. So not only is she trying to find the missing author, she's dealing with two bodies and having to deal with police attention on her. So now she's trying to figure out who the actual murderer is before she ends up getting framed. I really enjoyed the mystery in this one and how it played out. I did not in any way, shape or form figure out the mystery. I don't love Olive as much as some of the other main characters we follow in Cozy Mysteries that I read. So I don't know that this will ever be a four star series, but it's a decent little historical fiction mystery series. And I will definitely continue to read it because I find the mysteries slightly intriguing. And I'm very excited for the next one because it's like the Egyptian antiquities murder or something like that. And I love me some Egypt. So I'm going to be curious to see how that one plays out. So this one had a, like I said, an, an interesting plot and an intriguing mystery. And it was interesting to see how Olive kind of got wrapped up in that and like ended up being part of the potential suspect list, even though we as the reader knew she didn't do it. So it was quite interesting to see how that kind of played out in this one. And I'm curious to see what mystery she looks to solve in the next one. And then the last book I finished is Island in the Stars. This is the third and final book in the Problem Children series. And I was reading this for TBR Vet because I read the Problem Children, I think before booktube. And then I read it again very early in my booktube career. So now I have finally marked this TBR Vet of a series off of my TBR. So this follows the Problem Ch Children and they have been going on adventures and each of them has a unique quirk and for instance uh toot the youngest speaks exclusively in farts so to give you an example it says um when, when he does one there'll be a um footnote and it says number two the hangry puff a warning toot fires to remind his family that if he doesn't eat soon his mood will quickly sour smells like takeout food forgotten in a car overnight so that is sprinkled without so fart humor isn't your thing maybe not the series for you but there is so much heart in this series book two had an amazing message and book three made me cry i ended up giving this one 4.25 stars i really love the bond these kids have even though they're not like the best of friends some of them definitely fight with one another like there's that sibling rivalry but at the end of the day they really do truly love one another I love how things came together in this one and we got to see the conclusion of the story that has been building since book one there were some twists in this one that I thought were really really interesting and then there was a scene at the end that just had me in tears because it was so beautiful and emotional and just written so perfectly well that encapsulated everything I think the author was trying to get across in that moment and it was so relatable and it was just a beautiful end to this story. I can't believe I'm going to say this. I actually think I'm really going to miss these characters and I don't know if I would have said that after book one but I think book two and book three were so strong that they make up for any of the shortcomings in the first book. And I'm even going to miss Little Two and all of his farts, as crazy as that sounds. Because again, fart humor really isn't my thing, but I think it, it plays really well in this series. And there's a lot of things to balance that. So I think that kids who might get into this story because of the fart humor will also come away with some strong messaging um, and, and lessons learned. Because again, there's a lot of heart in these novels. So really enjoyed the end of this and glad that I can mark it off finally. And no longer have this TBR vet sitting around. So that has been my week so far. Like I said, I've had a very, very busy one. We're going to see how many other sequels I can get through because I do have quite a few more. In addition to the books I'm in the midst of, I have Prodigy, which is the second book in the Legend series. I have Ghosts of Green Glass House, which is a reread, but I'm working to catch up on the series and I was doing a reread. So I would count this as a sequel 
because I mean it is the second book so it is a sequel it's just me rereading the sequel but I still think it counts um so I would like to get to this one I have Traitor's Blade, which is the fifth book in the Blackthorn Key series, and I have reread the first four books in anticipation of finally being able to continue on with the series, because when I read book four, there was no book five, and I didn't even think about book five after that, so it's about time I continue on with this one. And then I have a Twisted Tale anthology, which are little short stories in the Twisted Tale series, and the Twisted Tales, um, are reimaginings of various Disney stories with like what if twists. So in this one, like the very first one is called Cast Out and it says, what if Snow White learned magic? So you'd be seeing the story of Snow White, but in that one, she's going to learn magic. So this is definitely something that could be very interesting with all of the little mini tales in it. So that's kind of my plan for the rest of the week. We'll see how many of these sequels I can get through. I don't think I have any others that I want to get to this week. The only other book I know I'm going to read is The Phantom Tollbooth, which is a reread and it's not a sequel or even a book in a series, but Nicole from Noteworthy Fiction has um, some sprints that she's going to be doing where we all read The Phantom Tollbooth together. So I will be doing that on Saturday. Other than that, I will be focused exclusively on sequels. Let's see how many I can get through in the last four days of this week. Fingers crossed I get through them all because that would be really nice to really work on some series this week. the 29th which means it's time to wrap this vlog up the final book support group is over for this month and I think I smashed it so obviously in the last update I gave you I had continuation station and my self-care I took a couple naps this weekend so I can check that off and I finished my book for continuation station I read the city beyond the sea this is the second and most recent book in the green wild series and I gave this 4.25 stars and as you can see, we now have a helper. She uh, insisted on being in this part of the video. So like I said, this is the second book in the Green Wild series and we're following Daisy. And in the first book, um, her mom goes on, ow. Oh, those were claws, Cielo. Okay, we're gonna set her down. Cause she just tried to take out my shoulder. So in the first book, Daisy's mom goes on a work trip and ends up vanishing and events lead Daisy to end up going to the green wild where she learns about some secrets her mom has been keeping from her and this whole new land with magic that she never knew existed and there is a thing that happens at the end of the first book that drives the plot of this one In this one we also get a second POV of a character that was mentioned in the first book I'm not going to say whether it was more than a mention whether we knew them or not but like they are not like a brand new character we've never heard of before and it alternates back and forth between daisy and this new character and we kind of see the journey that these characters go on in this book and i really enjoyed 
that journey. I really enjoyed getting to learn about the new character. I thought that they were a great addition to the series and I thought that their POV brought a lot to the story. There were twists in here I did not see coming, which I love when books can do that. And I'm very, very invested in the continuation of this journey. I'm very curious to see what happens to Daisy and Co. in the next book. I don't know if this is a trilogy, but either way, I'm going to be continuing on with the series because I really, really love the magic in this series. I love the friendships Daisy has made and like the journey they've been on and getting to explore more of this world. And I expect us to get to do more of that in book three. So very, very excited to continue on with this one. But that was my bingo board. Another successful round of the final book support group. In addition to that, though, I obviously did more because I mentioned more in the last clip. But I also finished The Princess Who Flew With Dragons, which is the third and most recent book in this series. Now, it hasn't been a book since 2019, so this might actually be the last. I just don't know. I ended up giving this 3.75 stars. This follows Princess Sophia, who ends up heading to a neighboring kingdom as kind of like a representative for her kingdom. And once there, she kind of goes out in a bit of a disguise because she wants a little bit of freedom. But then some stuff goes down with some ice giants. And when things get serious, she kind of has to step back into her role as a princess. I did not enjoy this as much as book two. I think book two has been my favorite, but I certainly like her more as a character than I did the POV from book one. I definitely liked the second half more than the first half because I think I got more into the plot once it kind of picked up and things got moving. And I thought there were some interesting twists and turns towards the end of this book that, like I said, I, I quite enjoyed. So very happy to be able to check this one off of my current series list, though, like I said, I don't know whether it is the final book or whether there may be more in the future. Then I read The Traitor's Blade, and this is the fifth book in the Blackthorn Key series, and I gave this four and a half stars. So this follows a boy named Christopher Rowe, who is an apothecary apprentice to Master Blackthorn. And in the first book, his master ends up dead and Christopher ends up having to try to put together the pieces of what happened to his master and why and there's this big mystery and it has led to discoveries that have continued to create this mysterious thing. I don't I don't quite know what word to use there um but there, there's been this overarching mystery throughout the entire series and the events in the first book kind of kicked that off and we've continued to follow Christopher and his allies as he tries to figure out what is going on despite all of this and everything that's going on and all of the new discoveries he um, deals with in each book. And there is always some sort of plot that doesn't have necessarily have something to do with the overarching plot. So we get those mysteries too. So he's kind of juggling a lot of balls. Like it says in this one, an old friend is ambushed and left for dead. An anonymous letter arrives and a mysterious warning is hidden inside a riddle and secret code so he has to investigate that and try to figure out what is going on there i absolutely adore this one the friendships he has are amazing and wonderful and just make my heart so happy there's such a good little friend group in this book and i absolutely adore seeing their interactions and seeing how that's continued to grow throughout the series there was a moment at the end of this book where i was so upset like mm, you got me you got me and it left on this note of finality because the sixth book from what I can tell is the final book and it left in such a way that you know exactly what's going to be going on in book six and I love that it left no ambiguity as to where we're going and I cannot wait to read the end of Christopher's story and see how this finally turns out because I started this series in 2019. I am so ready to find out the end of Christopher's story and finally see the conclusion because it's been a long time coming. Then, in not a series, I read The Phantom Toll Booth. So, uh, Nicole from Noteworthy Fiction was doing a read-along on her channel and I did check out some of her sprints, though I was uh, lurking because I wasn't feeling very chatty. But this is a classic middle grade and it follows a young boy named Milo who's kind of just kind of like coasting through life like, nothing is interesting. If he's at school, he wants to be at home. If he's home, he wants to be at school. He 
doesn't really want to be wherever it is he's going, but he also doesn't want to dilly-dally on his way there, and he doesn't really appreciate the things going on around him. And he's just bored. And he gets home from one day and finds a box. And when he opens the box, it's a toll booth. And he has this little car, and he gets in the little car, and he goes to the toll booth. And suddenly, he's in a completely different world. And once there, he goes on this grand adventure to help this land out and maybe start to realize that there are things going on around him that are worth paying attention to. Uh, I read this for the first time in fifth grade. Technically, it was read to me because um, there were two fifth grade classrooms in my school and there was a door in between and the teachers were really good friends. So we kind of have reading time together. So we'd bring our chairs into their classroom or they bring their chairs into our classroom and our teachers would read us books one or the other. And this was one of the books. So I have loved this book since I was in fifth grade. And I just love all of the puns. There's a lot of word humor in here. Like for instance, very quickly into his journey, Milo meets the weatherman. But the weatherman can't tell you whether it's going to rain or not because he's not that kind of weatherman. He's a W-H-E-T-H-E-R weatherman. So there's a lot of plays like that on words. And it is always fascinating to me the more I pick up as I get older and the more that makes sense to me and just upon reread realizing more and more and more of the little um twists and puns and wordplay that Norton Juster did I just adore this book and Milo's journey and it was so fun to be back with him and to get to experience it once again so this is one of my all-time favorite books and if you haven't read it I would highly recommend it because it's a fun time then I read The Fair Fleet Affair, and I gave this 3.25 stars. So this follows Asha and Alex, and they run the ANA Detective Agency, or at least they will if they ever get a case. And in their town, they have this museum that is dedicated to mysteries, and when the chairman of that institute goes missing, they end up getting a letter from said chairman inviting them to investigate the mystery of his disappearance. And we see them go through and try to solve all of these puzzles, an attempt to figure out where the chairman has gone and what happened to him. And I thought this was fine. I think I might have liked it more when I was a kid, but it was pretty simple. Um, there wasn't a lot of drama to it. And I think I wanted something I could probably sink my teeth into a little bit more. Um, I also would have liked a little bit more background. Like it felt very quick. Like I kept checking to make sure this wasn't like the second book in the series. And she's back y'all because it certainly felt like I had missed something and like some of the setup and some of like the the basic information of how they got here like we just jumped right into the mystery with no like real background on how these people all knew each other or at least it felt that way to me so I thought this was a, a decent mystery like I said that I would have enjoyed when I was a middle grader but as an adult I definitely wanted more and then I almost forgot I finished Captive Souls so this is the seventh book in the Palmetto the Witches of Palmetto Point series, and I gave it 3.75 stars, and I forgot it because it's an ebook. Um, this follows Charlie, who has the ability to, like, see ghosts. Her family is witches, and she occasionally consults with a local detective on some of his cases. This case, I can't really tell you about, but it is something that spawned from stuff going on in book six, and we kind of see the continuation of that. This series has um, a definite creep factor. It reads really, really quickly. The relationship between Charlie and her family is one of my favorite things about this because it is so interesting and they're all so different and it's so intriguing to see how they interact with one another and the different um, relationships they have. We get to see some more of her sort of extended family in this one, um, which I thought was an interesting little uh, speed bump that she had to deal with. And we get to learn more about other magic users in this one, which I also really, really liked. Again, this isn't a series I necessarily am like chomping at the bit to read, but I do enjoy them when I, I read them. It's just more of a, they're ebooks, so they're not necessarily the highest of priority and they're spooky, so I don't naturally gravitate towards them. Then a book I had on my TBR was Daughter of Smoke and Bone. And I read this in 2019. I gave it three stars and I ended up finding it in a little free library and was like, okay, well, I'll get it because there's no way I can continue on with the series without rereading this one. However, 
it's been on my TBR for a couple months now because it came out of my TBR jar and I just I feel dread every time I think about picking it up and again I only gave it three stars and from what I remember about it it earned that rating like I don't think my rating would have gotten better over time and I was reading some reviews and it reminded me of why it only got three stars so I was talking it over with Fenix and trying to decide whether it was worth at least giving a try and I've decided it's not because all I think about when I think about picking this book up is dread I have no desire to read it or dive back into the story and I don't think I'm going to rate it higher I actually think I'm going to rate it lower so I think I'd rather just unhaul it and call it a DNF even though I never picked it up because I have read it before it's not like it's a brand new read and I didn't even give it a shot it's more of a my instincts say that I just am not interested and that was the whole reason I got it was do I want to continue on with the series and I think I think I got my answer I have made progress in two other books so the first is Ghost of Green Glass House this is the sequel to Green Glass House and I'm on page 136 this follows a boy named Milo who lives at a smuggler's inn with his parents and last year at Christmas a bunch of people showed up and there was a giant mystery and he was trying to figure out why they were all there because they all seem mysterious and this year is Christmas time once again and they have a guest and he continues to stay and then some familiar faces start to show up and Milo realizes he's right back in the middle of another mystery so like I said I'm 136 pages in. I'm really really enjoying my reread of this series um I think I'm enjoying it more on reread so very excited to continue on with this even though I didn't get it done and read some standalones instead and then the last book I've made progress in is a Twisted Tale anthology so these are little mini stories in the Twisted Tale series and if you don't know what the Twisted Tale series is it is Disney stories that have like what if twists and I can tell you that as of right now I read what if Snow White learned magic what if Mulan became the Emperor's advisor and what if Remy had met Colette first so we have Snow White obviously Mulan obviously and then Remy and Colette is I believe Ratatouille so I read the first three I enjoyed um I think my ranking would go Mulan Snow White Ratatouille but I also don't know the story of Ratatouille so it's a lot harder to feel like the twist is new because I don't know anything about it. I'm enjoying this so far and it reads really quickly so I definitely am excited to continue on with this one and hopefully finish this one before the end of July. So that was my week. I think it was a very 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 successful week because I caught up on a bunch of series. I made progress in some series. I got through most of the series that were on my TBR that I had left so I'm very very happy with this. Once again, thank you so much, Steph, for hosting this. It does such a good job at making me really focus on my series and hone in on some ones that maybe I haven't thought of in a while. So thank you again to Steph for hosting. But I think that's going to be all for this video. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me C-related emojis. Like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!